Hello and welcome to 12 Steps to Poker Heaven, the show that allows you to become a better poker player. I'm Carmel Thomas and what we today, again on our poker marathon, is Mr. Grub Smith. Hey there. How are you today? Full of beans. You're full of beans today. In a good way. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> now, in our last episode, we show you how to play poker before and after the flop. Now, you also taught us the strategies and the moves that we should be looking for and making as well. That is true, Carmel. Essentially, pre-flop play is all about your cards. There are certain cards you don't want to be playing with, certain positions you don't want to be playing in. Post-flop, it becomes a slightly more inventive, slightly more intellectual game where you're trying to bluff your opponents, you're reading them a lot more, you've got more information. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and uh, today we're going to take your game two steps further. That's right, we'll begin with step five, common mistakes made by newcomers. That includes poker tells, those little physical twitches that allow people to know whether you've got a good hand or a bad hand. And I've got to tell you, it's not just newcomers who make those mistakes. Then step six, the art of bluffing. We'll be talking about semi-bluffs and pure bluffs. It's a vital part of the game. You can't wait for the best hand in poker. Sometimes you've got to make a move with absolute rags. So, Rob, sitting down to a poker table for the first time must be nerve-wracking. How vital is live experience? If you're going to be a serious player, you do have to get out of the bedroom where you're playing on the internet and, you, and get away from the poker books and get yourself into a live game. Mm -hmm. It might be at someone's house, it might be in a club, it might be in one of the big casinos, but you're going to notice the difference straight away. Instead of playing against a computer screen, you're playing against real people, and real people react in different ways. If you're a beginner, uh, you might look down at your cards and your eyes will widen with excitement. Or if you're bluffing, uh, your knees might go up and down with excitement, your hands might tremble. Uh, you see a lot of mistakes like that. Something else that beginners tend to get wrong if they don't have live experience is that they'll play far too many hands. Uh, poker is a game of patience sometimes. You've got to wait for bad cards to go by. It's not uncommon for a really good player to do nothing for an hour. Now, most poker players, when they're beginning to play, they want action. They think, this is exciting, I'm enjoying this. Oh, I've seen the films and everyone's always playing hands and pushing chips in. Sometimes it's best to do nothing at all. Another mistake that a beginner might make is playing above their bankroll. Mm. Now, if you've got a thousand pounds to gamble with, you don't want to enter a game where the smallest bet is 200 pounds, mm -hmm. because essentially you've only got enough, enough to last five hands, mm -hmm. uh, and that doesn't give you a big enough margin of error to ride the bad luck as well as the good. Uh, Going on tilt is a classic beginner's mistake, and not just beginners, you see top pros doing it, and that is reacting badly. When they get a bad beat, or they think they've been unlucky, or someone's annoyed them, they'll stop playing proper poker, and they'll play with their emotions, and that's usually a disaster. Mm, yeah. And I guess uh, the other one to watch out for is when you're playing as a beginner against someone who you know is a, is a really good pro. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> and you'll either clam up and do absolutely nothing at all, uh, or you might think, right, I'm playing the best guy in the world, I'm going to put all my money in, I'm going to beat him and tell all the guys, <laughs> and that's a quick way to go broke. And Grub, the internet has provided a foundation for people to learn how to play poker, but does this lead them to pick up bad habits? Well, the first thing to say about the internet is it is a great learning tool. Mm. Playing on the internet, you will play so many more hands per hour than you will in a live game. You're not having to wait for somebody to deal. People have only got 30 seconds to make their decisions. And sometimes internet players will go to a casino or a, or a club and they'll think, why is this taking so long? I'm only getting 10, 15 hands an hour. I'm used to getting 60 hands an hour. Uh, so... <laughs> So you'll pick up a lot more experience on the internet. You know, you'll get a year's worth of experience in three months for right. those poor guys who were learning the game before computers came out. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, how, Yeah, exactly. Uh, however, the internet can uh, be bad in some ways because you tend to play poker without concentrating fully when you're on the internet. Mm -hmm. You can be checking your emails, listening to the music, staring out of the window, um, and that's not good practice. In a live game, you need to be watching every hand, even the ones you're not involved in, because you can pick up a tell on someone yeah. just by watching them, even if you're not in the hand. In fact, it's sometimes easier to pick up tells on people if you have the luxury of sitting back and watching two guys lock antlers. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing about the internet is it's a bit like riding a bike with stabilizers. It does a lot for you. You can tick boxes to say what your betting is going to be. I'm going to check, I'm going to fold, I'm going to bet the pot, I'm going to raise a certain amount. Uh, and when you get to a live game, you don't have that luxury. Mm -hmm. So you'll often find internet newcomers come to a game and they're betting out of turn or they're folding when they could check and things like that. Uh, and that tends to annoy people and, and people tend to realise straight away, oh, this guy's just an internet guy, he won't know much about live play, yeah. I can exploit him. So you've really got to watch out for things like that. Here's an example from the European Poker Masters Paris Holden Trophy. 
Here we see that Ben Chatrie has raised in middle position. Everyone's folded around to the big blind where El Said is considering the call. How much he left? El Said, a slightly more experienced player, asking yeah. how much Ben Chatrie's got. 27. 27. Ben Chatrie doing his best not to look nervous, although covering the mouth and scratching the face, those are normally signs that you're trying to deceive somebody. El Said, as a better player, may have picked up on that. And with a king queen, he is going to make the call, it looks like. Oh. Yep, he calls it. So oh. we'll see a flop. Sam calls. Two players. Now, Ben Chatrie obviously has made a bit of a move with the ace eight. It's not the strongest hand, so he will be nervous. The flop is six, five, He's seven. Up a straight draw. All in. And this is where it's gone horribly wrong for him. Ben Chatrie says, I'm all in. Now, oddly enough, it's not him to act first. El Saeed is on the big blind, so the button is on the end of the table on your extreme left. El Saeed should have acted first. Ben Chatrie, nervous, has said, I'm all in. And El Saeed says, nothing like free information. And he now knows his hand is no good. So that is, a, I'm afraid, a schoolboy error from Monsieur Ben Chatrie. And uh, El Saeed says, I'll check to you. Now he's going to say, I'm all in again. Yeah. Oh, we can safely say, didn't want to do that, but the result is he takes down the hand. Now, Bob, let's talk about tells. What exactly are they? They are unconscious signs that people give off at the table, which allow you an insight into the strength or weakness of their hand. The most common ones are physical. Uh, a beginner, especially, when he looks at his cards, if he's excited, his eyes will widen, mm -hmm. his breathing might increase. Um, again, uh, if he leans back from the table a bit bored, it normally means, well, he's missed it. Yes. Or if he puts his cards away from him, even before it betting comes around to him, you can be pretty sure mm -hmm. he's not going to get involved in the pot. Some people will actually start, you know, picking their fingernails and making phone calls because you know they're not going to play their cards. Uh -huh. They've lost interest. Uh, obviously, the better you get, the more you'll disguise these tells. Uh, another one is uh, when players get slightly better, they know that they should keep their face as still as possible and try not to have their fingers trembling. Mm -hmm. But if you look under the table, if you lean back just a little bit and look under the table, sometimes you'll see someone tapping their leg or tapping their foot because nervous energy has to get out yes. of the body. It's very, very hard hard to actually do nothing when you're excited. So that usually means that somebody's bluffing mm -hmm. or they've got a monster. So you have to, mm -hmm. you know, that experience will tell you which it is. Uh, then there are signs like someone looking at their chips when the flop comes down. You should always be watching your opponents rather than staring at the ceiling or at your cards when the flop comes down, because that is obviously giving a lot of information to people about the strength of their hands. And if you look at somebody, he sees the flop and then he looks at his cards. He's probably checking to see, has he made a straight, has he made a flush, oh look there are three clubs there, do I have the ace of clubs? Again, a good player will look at his cards pre-flop. He'll know what they are, he'll memorise them and never have to look at them again. So that's kind of one tell you can easily cut off just with a bit of preparation at the beginning of the hand. Uh, another one would be uh, the way people bet. Um, if someone is uh, shoving their chips in really aggressively, they're taking a big stack and just making a big mess, mm -hmm. they're trying to look tough. Yeah. They're trying to look tough. And in poker there's a, a saying that weakness is strength and strength is weakness. Mm -hmm. So if somebody's trying to look aggressive, they're almost certainly trying to make you not bet. They don't want you to call because they're bluffing. Whereas if somebody sneaks into the hand and goes, up, oh, well, I might as well call, I'm a little bit reluctant and you can probably bully me off this one, that's when you've got to watch out because mm -hmm. they're probably going to snap the claws on you and you'll be in trouble. Lastly, if the flop comes down and somebody looks at their chips just sideways, it's almost unconscious, they almost can't help it, that means they're considering a bet. They like the flop, they're looking at their chip stack, they're wondering how many they're going to put in the middle. Conversely, if somebody sees the flop and doesn't look at their chips, you can be fairly sure they've missed it. Brilliant, that all makes uh, total sense, thank you. Uh, let's look at an example from the British Poker Open 2006. Just the blinds in action now, Koresh calling from the small blind, and a minimum raise from yeah. George Four Fraser thousand. with the 7-6. It seems you've got a big one every hand, George. If you're going to get cute with a 7-6 pre-flop, you want to make a bigger raise, try and get yeah, people out. You don't really want to see a flop. The big one. Three. Well, that said, he has seven. made trip sevens on the flop, so that's a perfect result for George. Three. Koresh checks it, and George checks it. That's the right move. Now George Six, has got a full Six, house. Thousand. Koresh is going to bet out. 
Well, George should call Koresh's 6,000 bet. He definitely shouldn't raise it. He wants to see another card, try and let Koresh have enough rope to hang himself. Raise. But here you can see the fingers trembling and he's made a raise. Now this is just too much information for Koresh to call. Shaking quite a lot, George. Mm -hmm. I'm an old man. <laughs> but that's I'm why always, you don't have anything to lose. I'm always shaking. <laughs> George saying he's shaking because yeah. he's an old man, but Koresh has been in too many card rooms so to not to see the writing on the wall. <laughs> he knows his ten queen is no good now. And George really didn't maximise his opportunity there. In mm. poker, you want to minimise your losses and maximise your winnings. And when you get a full house, you really want to be milking the cow for as much as you can get. Cards again One. folded round to the blinds. Where Ian Hope has picked up a suited big slick, bumps Six it up total. to 600. Trying to get rid of the blind here, or at least make it a difficult decision to call. Ace King is pretty, but it's only cool. ace high, so you don't really want to run into a pair. Adamson makes the call with 6 4 off suit. Well, he'll obviously need to hit Two, the flop. Three, He's three, made a gut shot four. straight draw. But but remember, there are only four fives in the deck, and it is going to be very hard for him to call that bet. He's basically got two choices here. He can fold or he can raise. But here's the cool. beginner's mistake. He chooses just to call. He's now putting money into a pot, chasing a very, very thin draw. Queen. Check or bet. That's actually a very good card for a bluff, because if he does put Ian Hope on a big ace, those paired queens Thousand. will now look... Very, very strong. So he knows he can't win, really, unless he bets. Fold or go all in is really his move here. But once again, he's just counting out a call. And this is really just throwing money down the well. Sometimes in poker, cool. it's much cheaper to bet. It may cost you more initially, but you get much more information. If he comes over the top Seven. there, he could Take get a fold. Bit. If he gets called, well, he knows it's not going to cost him any more money. As it is, the door's been left wide open. Ian Hope reads him correctly. Those calls look so weak. All in. But Ian Hope, even though he's only 21. got the Queens with the Ace King, has pushed all in. And now Adamson, all he can do is wave goodbye to his money. And you can see from the look on his face that he knows he's been a bit of a fool. He's even shaking his head. Talk about having a tell. And <laughs> the guy's yeah. just shaking his head and staring at the heavens. So experience really is vital at the poker table. Yes, it's like anything, although poker is quite an easy game for a beginner to do well at. As long as you've got the right instincts, the experience you can pick up in a matter of months, and we've seen relative beginners actually win the World Series of Poker main event, so it's not like, you know, snooker or cricket where you probably have to spend ten years mm -hmm. as an apprentice before mm -hmm. you get anywhere. Within poker, within about six, seven months, you can be a very, very good player. Fantastic. Well, uh, join us after the break. We'll be taking you through the art of bluffing at the poker table.